Good morning students. Today we will be starting with a new chapter Mahatma Gandhi and the National Movement. We will be studying the Rowlatt Act of 1919, the Jallianwala Bagh tragedy of 1919 and the Khilafat movement. The Rowlatt Act 1919 There was a great reaction among the Indians to the Montague Chelmsford reforms. So a reform was introduced through which the Indians asked the Britishers for some concessions. The reforms of 1919 failed to satisfy the Indians. The concession granted to them were much below their expectations. So the concessions given to the Indians by the Britishers through the Montague Chelmsford reforms gave them very little concessions the concessions were below their expectations the Indians expected huge concessions from the Britishers so it made them very much unsatisfied the Indian National Congress at its annual session held at Amritsar described them as inadequate unsatisfactory and disappointing so the indian national congress had its annual session and during the amritsar session they described the concessions granted to them as inadequate they were not sufficient they were not satisfactory and they were very very disappointing this was not what the indians wanted from the britishers while the assertive nationalists did not approve them the early nationalists welcomed them so the assertive nationalists were radicals and the early nationalists were the moderates the moderates accepted them but the radicals did not approve of these concessions this time the early nationalists left the congress and the assertive nationalists came to dominate it if you remember during the surat split the assertive nationalists were thrown out of congress but this time the early nationalists left the congress and the assertive nationalists they started to rule and dominate the congress the atmosphere was surcharged with passion and excitement the english were afraid lest the people should launch an agitation so when the english saw that the indians are so charged the atmosphere is so full of enthusiasm they were very much afraid that in this enthusiasm the indians should launch and can launch an agitation with this fear in mind the british government passed the rollet act in march 1919 to crush any popular or revolutionary movement so the britishers started to get scared of the indians that this excitement will make them launch an agitation so with this fear in the british government's mind they passed rollet act it was passed in march 1919 and through this act they can crush any revolutionary movement if they see two people planning to have a revolutionary movement or a group of people planning so they can crush any revolutionary movement that is being taken place it gave powers to the government to arrest and to detain suspected persons and to search them without a warrant and to imprison them without a trial so according to the rollet act if the government is suspecting any person of launching a revolutionary movement or agitating against the government that person can be arrested and can be detained without any warrant and can be searched without a warrant if you have to imprison a person if you have to search a person you need a warrant for that you need a permission for that but here according to rollet act they can imprison a person and they can search a person without any warrant and they can imprison them without any court trial any person under this act had no right to appeal wakil and dalil if a person has been arrested under this act the person has got no right to appeal in the court to have a wakil that is to have a lawyer to advocate for him and to place any dalil that is to place any appeal in the court to court pandit nehru by this act the government got autocratic rights to curb civil and political freedom very very rightly pandit nehru said that through this act the government curbed the civil and political rights and freedom of the indian people it is the right of the people to speak it is the right of the people to agitate if they are not happy but the uh, government is curbing their civil and political freedom the act came to be known as the black bill so it was popularly known as the black bill among the indian people and the indians were very much unhappy with the passing of the rollet act reaction of the people 
This act was a blot on the self-respect of the Indians and their national honor. The Indians in their own country were being disrespected. They were imprisoned without any trial. They got no rights under the Rowlett Act. So it was a big blot on the self-respect on the Indian people and their honor. It was against all the principles of justice and liberty. The Indians were not getting any sort of justice and liberty that is the freedom of political speech and uh, civil freedom. It sent a wave of anger and unrest throughout the country. The Indians got very angry when they saw that injustice is being done to them and they don't have any sort of liberty in their own country. Gandhiji appeared on the stage and launched a Satyagraha movement against this act. Against the Rollet Act, Gandhiji stepped up and he launched a Satyagraha movement. A new enthusiasm gripped the whole country. There were strikes everywhere. So with the starting of the Satyagraha movement, there were a lot of strikes everywhere in the entire country against the Rollet Act. Meetings were held and processions were taken out. The people rose unitedly against this act. All the people of India got united and they stood against the act and there were strikes and processions, meetings all over the country. A Hartal was observed all over India on 6th April 1919. Hartal is a strike. Soon Gandhiji became an all India leader. Gandhiji came into the forefront and he became the leader of the Indian masses. Efforts were made to observe Hartals in a peaceful manner. But incidents of police obstruction, rioting, violence and shooting took place in Delhi, Calcutta, Ahmedabad, Punjab, etc. as wave of anger engulfed the whole country. Gandhiji was a very non-violent person and he always preached non-violence. So whatever observation of Hartals they were having, they wanted to do it in peaceful manner. But there were some incidences where the police started the violence and they started uh, shooting at these peaceful people in different different areas of the country and the entire the whole country had a lot of people who were protesting and when they saw this violence going on against them they got very angry and anger engulfed the whole country the jallianwala bagh tragedy of 1919 there occurred a massacre at jallianwala bagh at amritsar on april 13 1919 Massacre is a brutal mass slaughtering of people. So at Jallianwala Bagh, there happened a massacre on April 13th. A peaceful strike was organized at Amritsar on March 30 and April 6, 1990 to protest against the Rollet Act. So the people of Amritsar, they were holding protests to retaliate against the Rollet Act. So they were having these strikes and protests. It was going on. The principal leaders of the Congress, Dr. Satyapal and Dr. Saifuddin Kichlu, were arrested and deported to Dharamshala. So the leaders of these protests at Amritsar against the Rollet Act, they were Dr. Satyapal and Dr. Saifuddin Kichlu and both of them were the leaders of the Congress. So they were arrested because as per the Rollet Act, the suspected person can be arrested. They were the leaders, so they were arrested and they were sent to Dharamshala. This sparked off a strike in the city. The entire city went on strike when they came to know that their leaders have been arrested and deported. The people marched in a procession to the residence of the deputy commissioner to demand the release of these leaders. So in anger, all the people, they marched to the house of the deputy commissioner and they asked him to release their leaders. The police fired two rounds to disperse the mob. The police did two air fires of their ammunition to make the people, the mob, go away. The result was the mob fury at Amritsar. So all the people got very angry that they are arresting the leaders and they are not releasing them and they are trying to air fire their rounds to disperse them. In their anger, the mob burnt government buildings, looted go-downs, killed a few officers and even they have injured two British women. The army was called in to restore order. When this kind of violence was seen on the sides of the Indians, then the army was called immediately to restore peace and order in the Amritsar area. General Dyer took charge of Amritsar on April 11, 1919. So as the army was called, General Dyer was the in charge of the army and he took charge of Amritsar on April 11. 
Now, General Dyer was a very brutal and a very cruel person. He took several repressive measures to restore order. It was his responsibility to restore peace and order in Amritsar. So to do that, he uh, tried to have repressive measures imposed on the people. As a result, a protest meeting was held at Janiawala in Amritsar on April 13, 1919. So on April 13, again the people started a protest meeting and it was being held at Janiawala Bagh. General Dyer reached there with his troops. So General Dyer was in charge of Amritsar and he was in charge to maintain peace and order in the Amritsar. So immediately when he came to know that there is a protest meeting being held at Jallianwala, immediately General Dyer reached there with his men. He wanted to strike terror in the whole of the Punjab and teach a lesson to the people. He ordered his troops to open fire on the unarmed people. So all these people were having peaceful protests. These people were unarmed. They did not have any weapon with them. And General Dyer wanted to strike terror in these people, so he asked his men, his troops, to open fire on these unarmed people who cannot even defend themselves. Firing continued till the whole of the ammunition was exhausted. His troops kept on firing till all their ammunition, their bullets were completely exhausted. About 1,000 persons died and several thousands were wounded. They could not escape because there was only one narrow entrance to the bar. The bag was covered on all three sides and there was just one passage which was used for the entrance as well as for the exit. So the people who were protesting inside the bag, they could not exit because the entrance and exit is same and the passage was completely blocked off by the troops of General Dyer who was continuously firing on these unarmed people and these people had nowhere to go, nowhere to save themselves. So thousand persons died over there and more than a several thousands were wounded in, the, in this tragedy. It was followed by a series of humiliating orders. Not only this happened, but after that a lot of humiliating, insulting orders were passed against the Indians. Curfew was imposed in the city. The water and electricity supply were cut off. There was complete curfew in Amritsar. There was no water and there was no electricity supply for the Indian people. People were flogged and put in jails. They were hit by sticks. They were beaten and they were put in jails. People were made to crawl while passing through the lane where the two English women were attacked. The two English women were injured. They were assaulted by the Indian people. So when the people were, would pass through the lane where these two English women were attacked. They, could, they don't need to walk over there. They had to crawl all through that lane. Arrested persons were confined in cages. Property was confiscated or destroyed. So the people who were arrested, they were put into cages. It was not prison. They were put into cages like animals. And the property was either taken away by the government or it was completely destroyed by them. Impact of the Jallianwala Incident on the National Movement The Jallianwala Massacre had a great significance in the history of India. It also had a great impact on Indian politics. The inhuman atrocities committed on the people gave a severe blow to the honor, dignity and prestige of the British government. Whatever cruelty the British government has shown to the people of India, the Indian people lost the honor respect and dignity of the British government forever. It marked permanently the government's relation with its Indian subject. So permanently it ruined the relationship of the Britishers and the Indians. Now the Indians would never ever trust the Britishers after all the atrocities they have committed upon them. Even the great poet Rabindranath Tagore renounced his knighthood against the atrocities committed in the Jallianwala Bagh tragedy. So the knighthood was given to Rabindranath Tagore by the Britishers. But after all the atrocities they had committed on, on the Indians in the Jallianwala Bagh, Rabindranath Tagore gave up his knighthood back to the government. When the government repression failed in intimidating the people, the morale of the Indian people was raised sky high and they jumped into the struggle for freedom with great vigor and courage. 
the government had a lot of repressive policies and a lot of repression imposed on the people of india to intimidate them to scare them to make them feel scared and draw themselves back but this only boosted the morale of the indian people and they were now more enthusiastic and more courageous towards the freedom struggle the people lost faith in the british rule and some took the path of violent struggle to get rid of it now all the people they lost any sort of faith they had in the british rule and some of them even adopted the path of violence to get rid of the britishers when mahatma gandhi was teaching the path of non violence even mahatma gandhi became the avowed enemy of the british rule in india now mahatma gandhi became the enemy of the britishers with the cooperation of ali brothers mohammad ali and shaukat ali who spearheaded the khilafat movement he launched his first non cooperation movement against the british government in 1920 next we will study about the khilafat movement and you will see how with the help of the ali brothers gandhi ji started his first non cooperation movement and also aided the ali brothers in the khilafat movement the khilafat movement the khilafat movement gave a new direction to the national movement the lucknow pact had brought the hindus and the muslims on the same platform to fight against the british government if you remember the lucknow pact that we had studied you will recall that how the lucknow pact has brought the hindus and the muslims together and it united them against the british rule they had resisted the rollet act together now hindu and muslims had united and they both resisted the rollet act together they struggled to stop the rollet act the muslims requested swami shraddhanand to address them from the pulpit of jama masjid in delhi while at amritsar the six handed over the keys of the golden temple to dr kichlu so this was a sign a symbol to show their unity that a muslim uh, is requesting a hindu to address them from the pulpit of jama masjid and also where a sikh is handing over the keys to the of the golden temple to a muslim there could be no greater instance of hindu muslim unity we have never seen such great hindu muslim unity ever before both were inspired by national sentiments but soon there was an incident which raised the muslim tempers high so the hindu muslim unity was going on very well and both hindus and muslims were inspired by the national sentiments and were working together for the freedom of india but soon an incident happened which made the muslims very angry it was a british policy after the war towards the sultan of turkey so the sultan of turkey was supposed to be the head of the muslims and the kind of policy the britishers adopted towards the sultan of turkey made the muslims very angry because that policy was very humiliating the allies had divided the territories of the turkish empire among themselves the victors won over turkey and they divided the turkish empire among themselves they also abolished the office of the khalifa in turkey the office of khalifa is the office of the caliph it aroused the anger of the muslims in india that the leadership of the caliph has been removed by the britishers and since the caliph was a leader of the muslims it hurt the sentiments of the muslims and made them very angry they started a powerful agitation known as the khilafat movement under the leadership of the ali brothers mohammad ali and shaukat ali so under the leadership of ali brothers khilafat movement was started against the abolishment of the caliphate in turkey gandhi ji supported this agitation gandhi ji felt it right to support them in this agitation as it would only see hindu muslim unity because during that time there was a lack of unity between the hindus and the muslims a khilafat committee was formed in india under the leadership of hakim ajmal khan molana azad the ali brothers and hasrat mohani so all these people they created a khilafat committee and these were the leaders it carried the flames of the movement to every corner of the country so every corner of the country this khilafat committee took their flame they conveyed the message of the khilafat movement all over india and they wanted people to join this movement against the britishers to raise their voices as to how the britishers had uh, dealt with the caliphate 
The All India Khilafat Committee in May 1920 adopted its non-cooperation program to fight against the Britishers. So this Khilafat Committee adopted a non-cooperation program that we are not going to cooperate with the Britishers and they adopted this non-cooperation program to fight against the Britishers that we are not going to cooperate with you at all. This program consisted of boycott of legislative council, government schools and colleges, law courts, foreign goods, government functions and the surrender of titles and distinctions. So they were completely boycotting the government and their services like schools, colleges and they also surrendered the titles and distinctions that the government had given to the Indians. In 1921, the Khilafat Committee appealed to all the Muslims not to join the police and armed forces and not to pay taxes. But the Khilafat Committee also requested all the Muslims that they should not join the police as being with the police they will only uh, serve the Britishers and also they encourage them not to join the armed forces because if they are joining the police and the armed forces they will only be serving the Britishers and when the time will arise the Britishers will ask them to fight against their own Indian people and they also requested the Muslims not to pay the taxes to the government that they are not going to cooperate with the government at any cost. It so enraged the government that Ali brothers were arrested on the charges of sedition against the government and spreading discontent among the people. The government got very angry when they heard about these, this non-cooperation program that the Muslims are following towards the Britishers. It made them so angry that they arrested both the Ali brothers and they charged them with sedition. Sedition is trying to uh, manipulate people against the rule, against the government and spreading discontent among the people. So, creating corruption in the society. However, the Khilafat movement soon lost its vigor and relevance when Mustafa Kemal Pasha dethroned the Turkish Sultan and declared Turkey a secular republic. Khilafat movement was going on, but Khilafat movement lost its importance and lost its energy when Mustafa Kemal Pasha in Turkey removed, dethroned the Sultan and declared Turkey as a secular republic that now Turkey is secular. So the Khilafat movement was going on for the Caliphate. When Turkey has been declared a secular republic, there is no point of having any Khilafat movement. So the Khilafat movement lost its importance. The Khilafat movement came to an end and merged with the non-cooperation movement launched by Gandhiji. The Khilafat movement came to an end, but it merged with the non-cooperation movement that Gandhiji had started towards the end of the Khilafat movement and also taking the help of the non-cooperation program. It left a strong sentiment of Hindu-Muslim unity. The Hindu Muslims were united together and it created a strong sense of unity among both the communities. It played an important part in strengthening the nationalist feeling and led to political awakening. So the people of India were politically awakened as they, the Hindus and the Muslims united together and they started to strive again for the national, uh, national freedom, the nation's freedom.